Hello, everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, episode 17 of For the Minions, the weekly show where we talk about some of the post-Paragon projects currently in production. This week, we have news and updates, as always, with uh, some special news from Core, and then predecessors uh, closed alpha, of course. After that, we'll move into the poll results. Then we have Tech Time with Aruba. Our topic for discussion this week will be our proudest Paragon moments and our most embarrassing Paragon moments. And we're going to round it all out with a community suggestion, which is guilds or clans or what have you for the various games. I'm your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me as always is my lovely co-host, Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? I am doing great. I am so excited because we have a really cool guest with us this week. The VP and CMO of Metabuff Games himself, Mr. Opolis Prime. How are you, my man? I think it was a little bit of an oversell on cool, but uh, <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing fairly well. Can't complain. Can't complain. Awesome. Thank you. Undersell. Oh, well, my goodness. I just can't do anything right, can I? <laughs> no, you most certainly cannot. Get out of here. <laughs> so, Opolis, uh, give us a little bit of a background on your Paragon experience, and uh, who was your favorite hero? Um, I, well, my favorite hero is is Howitzer. It's it has to be. Uh, I actually played a, a, a game that everybody's going to shun me for, which was Battleborn. And my brother was like, "There's a there's a character in in the game. We need a mid laner. You're gonna you're gonna play the same character essentially." And I, he's, I ended up playing Howitzer for literally 62 days worth of in-game um, oh, nice. because he would not allow me to play anything else when I played with him. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not one of the best uh, mobile players in the world, but uh, I, I can kind of play. You can so. make it rain? Yeah, I can make it rain. That's, a, that's about it. Um, <laughs> right on. But yeah, Howie, all day. That's so cool. Yeah, I love Howie. Yeah, Howitzer was very, very, very cool. Uh, hero, one that I thought sucked because a, a YouTuber that I that got me into Paragon told me that he sucked, and uh, so I just always thought he sucked until I tried him. And I was like, "What is this guy talking about? This character is amazing." <laughs> well, if it's on the internet, it's true. So yeah, exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to our news and updates. They're huge this week. Starting off with Core, and we're going to let Opalus lead the way on this one because he brought a lot of goodies with him. Okay, um, so some of the more prominent updates are that we're initiating a change log into the website to give people more of an expectation of what changes are going to be done to the heroes, if any. Um, obviously, some heroes have to change, some things were broken, and uh, that change log is going to give you a kind of a, a running update. Kind of like a, a dev log, essentially, so that you have a good expectation of what is going to change and what is to come. Uh, the FAQ that was, we reached out to uh, 17 different communities. We got 19 pages back of questions, uh, and we finally have it done. And it will be up Thursday. Uh, Aporia Customs is one of our new partners. They will be offering. Uh, multiple custom apparel pieces for the game and for Metabuff. Um, this is uh, sublimate, sublimated hoodies, uh, joggers, leggings, things like that. Uh, we also have a storefront tier up because we've been beaten down left and right by everybody <laughs> wanting something <laughs> to wear. So we have something up for the community so that they could get uh, you know, a t-shirt with core etc. And one of the bigger announcements is we we heard you, we get it, we understand you love Fang Mao. So Fang Mao will in fact be replacing Kuang and Decker will be replacing FaZe for the first 15. Um, this is, you know, community feedback. We appreciate you guys. We, we love every minute of it. Uh, and you can check all that out on the website. So you're kind of getting it back to the basics, like the basic ones that were released with Legacy. It seems like those are the ones that people want the most, and that's the ones that you guys are sort of including. Um, I think that's a really good idea because it gives you a better basis to start at with your with your alpha. 
And uh, I just love Decker far more than FaZe personally, so I'm happy about that. And uh, actually, I liked Feng Mao a lot better than than any other jungler, really. Uh, other than Grux, I liked Grux, but uh, yeah, I think that's a really cool change. I'm really glad you guys are listening to the community, and the apparel is absolutely amazing. Yeah, we um, we recently started working with Aporia. They're a, they're kind of a newer a newer company. They're amazing at what they do. They're amazing guys, and uh, they can provide pretty much anything and everything for any of the esports. So it's pretty nice to have a partnership with with those guys. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Like the nostalgia of characters is so important to people when you've, you know, grown with the character over time and you've seen the changes that they've had done and you've, you, the different patches, everything like that. So we absolutely understand what the community is asking for. They're asking for their nostalgia. They're asking for their, their feel good back. And uh, we we're definitely here to give you the, the best product possible. So yeah, it definitely seems that way. I've been really blown away um, with the last couple of updates from you guys. So definitely you guys are listening for sure. And that's something that I, you know, always said even before I got to know some of the members on the team um, in, in some of the videos that I did uh, covering CORE. I was like, they are just like all about community. They are listening. You know, they they are here to here to please, it seems like. So no, you guys we- are... We can't always listen to everything, obviously, uh, because Box Grux is not coming back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aww. I'm sorry. It's not happening. Um, but uh, you guys, I, one other thing that you guys are going to be able to do um, is to show off the map a little bit early, because we are doing another map test with the uh, influencers, and you and Mongoose both have the build currently so you are able to yeah. <laughs> i know mongoose is super happy about that um check out the amazing amazing artwork from rico because that that kid is is immaculate with with his uh, level design and uh he also just picked up a, a mocap suit as well so we are going to be working with that too because we heard you we know the animations on the on the last video, the Sparrow video weren't the best in the world, but that's a level designer. Come on, give the guy credit. <laughs> he's not an animator, you know, but now he's got a mocap suit. So bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So uh, do you want to go ahead and get into the to the map and uh, I'll kind of drive us around and you can you can tell us some features and, set and such? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Immediately, one of the things I noticed is I don't know how, if you guys did... Um, speed warping or if this is just a clever use of animations but whenever kalari takes off her footsteps are a little bit slower and then they they pick up pace which is a nice touch and adds to the immersiveness um however is she actually slower upon takeoff or is that just um there will be uh you know there will be an acceleration and a deceleration with the characters uh it's i mean it's part of movement uh fundamental movement in our opinion, like you have to have a deceleration when you're stopping. You have to have a realistic feel of the character and the movement. It's it's much more immersive, and it it just feels better in combat because instead of an abrupt like no no character that weighs three thousand pounds like Rampage is going to come to an immediate halt. All right. You know? so. <laughs> Okay, and then we got the towers, we got the uh, the cannons, which look amazing. Um, the reflections on these surfaces are absolutely top-notch. So this is our inhibitor right here. We'll just go through the lanes first, and then we'll go, go exploring through the jungle. Yeah, the, um, a lot of the materials provided by Epic were, were excellent, and it comes down to the lighting. And like I said, Rico is, is a phenomenal level designer. His mm-hmm. his attention to detail is is pretty unparalleled. We've got a lot of verticality on the map, which is something that everybody wanted, I know. And as we come down here, we see this rock pile on the left. And I noticed earlier, those rocks aren't just for show. That's not just that's not a smooth surface. You kind of bounce around and jumble around through the through these rocks, which is a very nice touch, I think. Yeah, it's um the once again it comes down to immersion in the level and feeling like 
your part of the level. Um, from you know walking on the surfaces to we we are working with sound technologists to create an immersion in the jungle, uh, menacing feel. When you walk into the jungle, the music changes. the The sounds are different in the jungle because if an explosion goes off with a whole canopy in a smaller area, the explosion is going to sound different. So there's a lot of dynamic sound, a lot of dynamic texture, feel, uh, creating you know the best possible experience when you're running around. Okay, and right here it looks like we have an ember collector. Is that an ember collector? Or is that uh, just a... It is, in fact, the harvester. Oh, right on. So is this something we'll have to plant? I don't know if you got... If you if, if it's something you can't talk about at this time, just, just tell me TBD. To be well, determined. um... It, it is still somewhat in, in testing and to be determined, but we are going to have a pad you step on, turn it on, uh, you know, normal harvester mechanic from Legacy. Uh, you, you won't have to sit there forever, but you know, we're playing with the times and making sure that it feels good for the junglers. Now, uh, another thing I've noticed is there is definitely a dawn side and a dusk side. We've got this nice green grass over here. But as you cross the river, it becomes this sort of brown, um, sort of autumn feel. So that's really nice, especially for someone who meet, like me who gets lost easy, to have a visual indicator of which side of the freaking map I'm on. Yeah, there's, um, there's multiple visual indicators throughout the map. Uh, in the jungle, there will be, when you're on Orb Prime's side, there's, there's going to be statues that kind of give you a feel for where you are uh, as you learn the map. Nobody wants to, you know, jump into a game and, and not have any idea where they are. Even with the mini map, sometimes it can be a little a little tedious to figure it out if everything looks the same. Yeah, and here on the uh on the dust side we have the black platforms as opposed to the white platforms that were on the other side. And the uh, and of course the towers look a little different as well, the cannons. Yeah, the uh, the dusk side is going to be more of an obsidian feel, and the dawn side is going to be uh, a little bit more uh, opalescent in the feel, mm -hmm. having like a kind of a rainbow esque texture. That was one of the first things I noticed was how beautiful that looked. Like it looks like mother of pearl, just the way it just kind of shines, and you can see that um, definite um, yeah. that that's what you guys were going for. Yeah, it's uh like I said again, Rico. It's all it's mm -hmm. all him with the lighting and the way he he text or you know puts the textures in, mm -hmm. and um, everything that Epic gave out in in uh their their release is all super high quality. So getting the right lighting onto it and it's it's going to look beautiful. Yeah, it's stunning for sure. Now, I've, we are something I just noticed is the launch pads on Dusk side are different shape than the launch pads on Dawn side, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is, that is, like I said, there's going to be different features on each side, uh, just to give a little bit of a dynamic feel to everything. Yeah. There's um, definitely no mistaking which side you're on. So let's head down th here through mid lane and, uh, well, I'm not even going through mid lane. Um, so that's another question I had. Um, is there, what what kind of delineation do you have between duo lane and solo lane? Is there like a difference between the tower distances, or is it just the buffs that are on either side? We are we are kicking the lane out just a little bit. It's going to be just a little bit longer. Um, we're we're still testing. Uh, that's what part of the map testing for the influencers and for the competitive players is going to be about is making sure that the times feel good making sure that, you know, rotation feels good. Um, there's there's also the harvester versus the dunk on either on either side of the lanes. One lane has the harvester, one lane has the has the dunk. Okay. Um, and we've also uh, brought kind of a, a different pull through on the middle lane. We've bent it just a little bit so that you can't actually see straight across through everything from core to oh, core. I see that. That's interesting. So the pathing on that is going to be a little bit different as well. That's another thing that we're going to be testing with the uh, map test. Okay, great. 
So no, so that's uh that's mid lane and uh and the side lane. Let's hop into the jungle here. Let's go across the river. We have the river buffs. I think are much more appropriate distance than they were during the uh, AB map testing. Because this is you got a, a ways to go for mid lane to get to the river buffs, and it's going to be a dangerous occurrence to come in over here and try and get these buffs because you have fog mm -hmm. walls all over the place right here. Yeah, um, and so we're really looking for positioning to be a, a, a factor in the game, especially for junglers. Uh, during the map testing, there was a, a J. Leo made a very, very poignant comment about when you go to the buff, it should be a commitment. Uh, and you should, when you go and commit, you're there. There's no, you know, coming back from it. So warding is going to be a very, very big, big thing in our in our game, you're going to have to be very, very on point with your wards, uh, know where the rotations are, and you're going to have to work with your team exceedingly well to know when people are missing from their lane. Now let's head back over here to the orb prime. Now he looks bigger than I remember. Did you guys make him bigger or is that just me? So um, he, my imagination. He, uh, he he is a, a little bit bigger. Uh, he I think he's a little bit bigger in this map than he actually is. Just a a fraction. But um, like like we said before, uh, imposing menacing jungle. Mm -hmm. you know, when you walk in to the jungle, you should feel it. It shouldn't be walking, you know, in sunshine and skipping through the 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 forest you know when you walk in there the lighting changes it's mm -hmm. darker it's more menacing the sound will be more menacing it's going to be uh, a much more immersive experience and from here it looks like there's really three entrances uh the main entrance that anybody can get through and then some side entrances into orb prime that people with some vertical movement can get into whoop there we go and then we have a another way in, actually, that I wanted to discuss later on. But for now, I think we'll leave that alone. But uh, I like this space that you have to fight for fighting the Orb Prime. And I like uh, I like the different entrances and such. Yeah, it, again, uh, from the feedback from influencers, you have to make the commitment when you're going for Orb Prime. There shouldn't be you know, 17 different ways to get out if if you've, you know, made the decision to go for Prime. All right, I'm going to head back up to the core here, and then we'll uh, I'm gonna run through the jungle as if the game was just starting, and we're going to start the jungle off. God, this map is so fucking gorgeous. I know. Yeah, we, we heard, you know, Rico made the decision on on going with the monolith assets because they look better. They feel better and the jungle looks better with with the assets. He also added in some some things, you know, extra rock to, uh, piles, things like that, that weren't necessarily with the assets in order to uh, give, like I said, a much more dynamic feel. All right, so we went through the lanes. Let's go into the jungle now. This is the pretty much standard jungle entrance. Now, I think I have a rotation that I think I like, but I don't know. You know, of course, it's going to change as things go on. So if you come through the jungle, there is a very clear path, and there is definitely going to be um, different strategies for clearing the jungle. But if we pop over this edge right here, we're going to get right down into red buff. So we got the red buff right here, which is very cool. And a common strategy in Legacy was the, you know, everybody would help out, either help the jungler take the red buff, or the jungler would help the carry get the red buff but there he is right there but after you grab that you can pop right back over here and then you've got you've got the harvester right here but you've got a jungle camp right above him and then it's a nice natural flow you got the the harvester right there let's come around the edge here and find this other jungle camp hopefully i haven't lost myself already there's our other jungle camp right here. Take that out, and then you can shoot straight across to the third jungle camp and clear that out. And after you're done there, you can 
quickly, very quickly, either gank mid lane or come over here and gank the lane here. So I think I, I, that's really nice. Um, it feels good. It feels like an appropriate distance between each jungle camp. And uh, I really like the layout. I really like the layout. I really, I mean, the look is of course incredible, but there's the layout itself is probably more important than the appearance. And uh, it, it's, I think it's really good. I think you guys did a great job with this. Yeah, and that that came from, as you know, we had the addition of Blood Mortius to the team. Uh, his jungling experience is, is amazing. We had uh, incredible feedback from all of the influencers and uh, and competitive players, and they you know pointed out a lot of of, of things in the jungle that they really liked and disliked about Legacy Monolith, etc. And we took a lot of inspiration from from other pathing. Uh, in other MOBAs as well to make sure that we get a a really good rotation feel and a, a chance for diversity in play. That's the most important thing is making sure the diversity is there. Now we have Fangtooth here who also looks appropriately huge and it looks like the, pretty much the same design as the Orb Prime Pit. You got the main entrances, the main entrance here and you got some side entrances that uh, heroes with some verticality can get into. And this pretty much mirrors the Orb Prime, yeah? Yeah, for the most part. Um, I mean, it's it's set a little bit different in the map, just slightly. Okay. But uh, again, it's all about the commitment. When you when you commit to the, uh, the objectives in the jungle, uh, you, you either, it's a go or no go. There's no in between. There's no tease in it. Yeah. Now, something interesting I wanted to ask you about, and I don't know if this was intentional or not. Um, as I was messing around here in the jungle, I saw these piles. I was like, that looks like stairs. So I started I started climbing. Let's see if I can do if I can do this. Of course I can't now that I'm now that I'm on the spot. So are you supposed to be able to get up here? Um it's it's still one of those things that we're gonna be uh, testing, if, you know, different verticalities, things like that. Uh, chances are we we might not include that, but uh, I mean, it would it would take, you know, extreme verticality from a hero. It's yeah, just something it, it for would just have to be Kalari. Yeah, uh, and, and future characters, you know, may have a, a little bit of a diversity in the way they can traverse the map as well. So, those are things that we we keep in our mind and available in our mind if the time comes for it. it but it, it almost when i was going through here and finding all this it looks like you guys designed a pathway like a, a catwalk to get through the jungle which i think is really cool but i don't know if that was intended or not oh uh, i mean like i said diversity uh in the future is an important feature uh, and it was actually intended by Rico uh, to experiment with and to play with. Oh, uh, okay. So, you know, we can, we can uh, you know, put invisible walls in the beginning. And then as we, as we test it with the player test servers uh, and it works and it, and it, you know, it's not broken, <laughs> then uh, we can, we can definitely move towards a diversity in play. In the future, I could definitely see where that would give an advantage to heroes like Kalari. Yeah, and uh, Epic actually played around with a spider character that could walk walls and and things like that. So, I mean, we're we're not going to limit ourselves in the future. Um, you know, being able to to experiment and create new styles of play is an important thing to us. We really, really want to focus on diversity. More right. not so humanoid characters, etc. Right on. Yeah, we covered Hatch in uh, for the minions a couple weeks ago. Uh, not only Hatch, but some of the other sort of beast type heroes that they had planned that they never got around to. But yeah, this map is absolutely. I could do this all day. <laughs> I could just run around in here all day. <laughs> so props to Rico. Holy shit. Yeah, he's uh the level design team is is pretty intense. They're uh 
they have a heavy, heavy duty focus on what they what they do, and they have an extraordinary passion. Both Rico and Mikey, and uh, Sensei Suplex, uh, they're they're all amazing guys. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up for the for the core map run through. Unless you had something else you wanted to point out in particular, and I can head over that way. Oh, no, I think you pretty much covered most of it. Okay, awesome. I guess I, I guess I have to put it away now. <laughs> <laughs> Un- unfortunately, put your toy away. <laughs> yeah, we're still we're still playing with some of the uh, the the uh, settings and the textures though. Like there's a. Uh, we're we're at a steady 144 on frames per second, uh, except in mid lane we have a little bit of a a drop. Okay, and that's that's going to be optimized. But other than that, um, everything else is going to be tested in in the influencer map test. Yo, that that map is absolutely sick. You guys knocked it out of the park. I am so happy right now. <laughs> So uh, okay, is that is that all the updates you have have for us for uh, core? Yeah. All right, cool. I, I know that was a an extremely extended portion of news and updates for core, but uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, to Omega. Mandy, what news do we have from Omega Studios? Well, the big big news, of course, is that they finally released Alpha and um, started rolling out those keys for everybody, and they've actually done what like three or four um i think they did two giveaways um and then a couple of rounds of uh, rolled out emails so um they're uh you know got got that going um they have temporarily shut down servers to go ahead and um start working on some updates and stuff um and then they're gonna um release more keys after that so if you didn't get one just hang in there keep checking that discord keep up to date with them so um you can know what's going on be in the know and then other than that i think we were all going to talk about our first impressions of the alpha um i actually i didn't really collect my thoughts very well before this um (laughs) but i I had quite a few bugs, so which is expected. It's not like that's a big surprise. Um, so I don't know. Um, I, I had fun running around and doing some of the testing. I especially had fun being able to play with um, some of the other influencers and stuff like that. Um, and one of the major things for me that was fun was trying characters that I didn't typically ever really try during uh paragon so i i played around with fang mao and um even murdoch i didn't mess with very much in paragon so and then i got to try muriel which was a big fun uh thing for me because i just really never gave her a good shot in um in paragon so that was that was fun for me personally uh trying out some of those characters that i didn't mess with too much Opalus, uh, did you get a chance to see any of the gameplay footage from uh, Predecessors Alpha? And uh, if you did, what did you think? Um, I did. I did get a chance to see a little bit from Britic. Um, I mean, uh, the first night I, I saw one game and then some clips from him. Um, overall, it, it's it's looking good. It's progress. You know, uh, this is this is not easy. Like they've gotten a lot of negative feedback. A whole lot, and some of it, in my personal opinion, is is pretty unwarranted when it comes to to developing. Because, like, I, I understand people don't really have the same um, understanding as as you know predecessors team and and our team when it comes to this. Epic Games essentially gave everybody a, a, a window crank and a radio knob, and everyone, you know, the community's like, "All right, we'll make the game," because they gave you everything. And it's like, well, no, we got to make a, a Murcielago out of a, a window crank and a, a radio knob, like by hand. So, it's a it's very, very, very difficult task. Uh, the gas system for gameplay abilities in uh in Unreal is it's literally what it what it is Unreal. It's one of the most immense systems around. So, it's not an easy task to make this game. And then you have client side, uh, you know server side prediction a lot of a lot of issues arise when you're when you're developing a game for multiplayer that people aren't you know thoroughly understanding of so each of these projects is going to progress you know it's it's just a, a learning curve yeah 
And uh, like I was saying, for every like loud, boorish asshole that's out there out, out there shouting a project down, there's like 50 other people that are just normal and understanding that just don't say anything. It's you, you just only ever hear the loud ones. So I think it's uh, I think the reception was a little more positive than what people uh, seem to think and then than what like Reddit or anything would lead you to believe. But there were a lot of issues with the game. I personally found a lot, quite a few issues with the game. Um, but uh, overall impressions, it was really good. It was a really good start, and I'm really excited to see uh, how far they can go with Predecessor. Um, out of all the heroes that they released, Gadget, I think, felt the most like coming home. Like, when I played Gadget, I was like, this is what I was looking for out of a Paragon remake. I feel like I, feel like I just came back home from work and sat down to play some Paragon. And that was just such a great feeling. And if nothing else, thank you to the entire team of Omega Studios for giving me that. Um, so that's, that's the, that's, that's the good thing. There was, however, like every hero felt a little bit off to me, just like a little tiny bit off. And I couldn't quite put my finger on it until uh, I was watching one of Britic's videos, Britic's uh, first, first impressions video. And Britic really nailed it on the head. There was no animation canceling, and that sounds like a very small thing. And the but uh, the example he used was Severog. Like with Severog, used to be able to use a basic attack and then a soul siphon, then a basic attack. So it'd be bam, 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 instead of you know finishing the entire basic attack animation, then doing soul siphon, and then another basic attack animation. And you weren't able to do that in uh, in predecessor, and that's why everybody felt a little odd to me. Like. Um, Muriel, Muriel especially, I didn't play a lot of Severog, I did play some Muriel, and just not ha not having the ability to basic attack, serenity, basic attack, and just get that, that triple tap combo of damage in, made everything feel slightly slower than it should have been, and I think that translated to the videos when people were watching it, everything just looked a little bit slower than they remembered, even, uh, even by legacy standards. However, I do think they are, like I said, they're off to a great start. Um, they are going to be making the changes that they need to make. They've got the servers down right now for that. So hopefully when those servers come back up, there'll be a lot of this stuff fixed and we'll get an even better experience. We can find even more problems and let them know what those problems are so that they can fix those and continue on. Because this is just a development step in the process. This isn't the final game. It's a tool for Omega Studios to use to better the final product. This is not the final product. So that's about all I got to say on that. Anybody else got anything? I'm looking forward to the updates because I think it will feel better to play um, when they tackle some of those some of those first uh, issues that people were reporting. I think that'll make it feel better to to me personally because oh, yeah. yeah, like you said, there was just something a little off um, that I really couldn't quite put my finger on, and I wasn't sure if it was because I was playing characters that didn't feel. That I wasn't comfortable with, you know, um, there's something about playing your main that, mm -hmm. you know, helped with, um, with that feeling. So, um, I'm definitely looking forward to, to see what they bring us in these first kind of wave of updates. Yeah. I think the real make or break is when people get to play their main and how, what they think of their main once they get into it. Mm-hmm. Moving on from Omega Studios, let's move on to the uh, Undying Games with Ethereal. They had their lore contest. Uh, they haven't released the names of the winners yet. I know who they are because I help judge the competition, but uh, Undying still needs to talk to the winners and get them to sign an NDA and such. If you don't know, the winners of the lore competition get to join Undying's lore team and help develop their own hero. Uh, one thing... I can talk about from the lore competition is that a huge amount of the submissions were for their myth, Dante. Uh, Dante kind of reminds me of Twin Blast, gives off that uh, that TB vibe. Vibe. His story is that he's the crown prince, but his father, the king, is dying, and his city is becoming overrun with corruption. So Dante takes it upon himself to mete out some masked vigilante justice at night. He's kind of a mix between Batman and the Punisher. And I guess that really appeals to people because there were so many stories about Dante. So I expected Malaya to be kind of their poster girl, but it looks like Dante is taken over as uh, as Undying Games' poster boy for uh, for Ethereal. Um, Opalus, have you have you been checking up on Ethereal at all? I mean, they're like a they're kind of an outlier here. They're they're completely different than anyone else as far as these games go. Um, yeah, I've I've you know seen a few things. And I don't really 
get as much time as everybody else does when it comes to you <laughs> yeah. know keeping up with other projects because we're so immersed in what we're doing. But um, I, I'm interested in in seeing there how they you know make this game. Uh, the verticality is is something that I'm, I'm very interested in seeing how they tackle a lot of the issues with it. But um, and I mean everybody loves you know dark and dreary no matter how cheerful they are. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I, I can see why Dante is is a you know a favorite out of everybody. Mandy, you have anything to say? No, sir. You have nothing to say <laughs> for yourself, Mandy? I have nothing to say for myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on to the poll results for this week. Uh, well, last week, let's let's talk about the poll results from last week. We had Core at 54%, Predecessor at 29%, Ethereal at 13 Phoenix Rising at 3%. This week, uh, out of 937 votes, and bear in mind, I had to do this a little early. I usually give it about three days before I get the results. So this was a little early. We still had more votes than normal. Uh, Core came in at 62%, Predecessor at 21 Ethereal at 14 Phoenix Rising at 3 Now, the kind of the reason I do this poll is to gauge what updates affect the numbers of how people are hyped for the individual game. And uh, this was kind of a weird thing. I expected uh, Predecessor's re alpha release to bump their numbers up, but actually they went down quite a bit. So I, that does uh, that does give me the feeling that, you know, maybe I was wrong with what I was talking about before. Maybe there is a lot more just general public um, uh, disappointment in the alpha, which uh, I hope that's not the case because, like I said, it's, it's just the closed alpha. It's a tool. It's not the final game. But for now that... Uh, that definitely seems to have affected their numbers in the poll. On the show a few weeks ago, one of our topics for discussion was test maps and uh, how you can just have a map where you're just, you know, engaging the AI and engaging minions and uh, things like that. So Ruba done up a little uh, explanation of how that can be done if it is possible. Ruba, take it away. Thank you very much, Mongoose. Um, yeah, I can. Uh, it's an interesting question. Um, and it, like, it came up all the way through Paragon people wanted like a test map um if you've ever played league of legends before um they have like a like a training mode where you can you get like an option down the side of the screen and you can increase levels and heroes and all sorts of things um, and uh, i just thought i'd maybe talk about you know how possible it is in the unreal engine um i don't know if any of the paragon remakes are not using unreal but at least for unreal um maybe talk a little bit about it so but yeah so i just want to talk like briefly about this gla this graphic um and the way that the majority of the Paragon remakes work is they have a dedicated server that's used for transmitting all the data. So all these computers um, are all the, the clients as they're called. So those are remote connections. So that could be someone sat in their spare room and um, playing their PC in their living, or their living room or den playing the PlayStation 4 or whatever. And then they communicate with a central server. Um, that um, does a lot of the calculations and like stores the map but then it also shares all that information with the other clients so say i'm here and i'm steel and i go up to punch someone in the face my client will send that punch to the server and then it will transmit it to all the other clients um, and then they, everyone everyone sees steel punching me in the face so that's like that's like the standard setup and um, the reason that it becomes relevant is when you're designing a game um, you really need to design whether you want to have this multiplayer um, client server option or you want to have what's known as a standalone server which is when you don't have an external server you run the game on your own machine um, so if you're playing like a single player game like say minecraft or like any kind of first person shooter um, or loads of games the, the server actually runs on your computer so it hides in the background and you don't see it um, if we jump over to the unreal engine um, and i hit play um, in the editor here and what I've done is something really simple is I've set this to run as a dedicated server so when I go and play um, normally we would just have the uh, the one character and now we actually have two so we now actually have two Zinxies um, running around okay. and the screens are a bit weird but you can probably get to see the picture that I, I'm actually here together now the reason this becomes relevant is when we're designing a game in Unreal Engine you have to pick one or the other you either have to have a standalone server option or a multiplayer server option because of the way that the uh, the clients and the servers interact um, if you cast your mind back to when paragon 
used to have it had a solo versus AI and uh, I don't know what it's called play, player versus AI where you could either play as one person versus uh, nine bots so four in your team five in the other or you could do five players versus five bots those still required you to queue up and connect to a server um, and so what you were actually doing when you were doing a solo versus AI your client was connecting to the Epic Game servers to let you play the game. So even though you were doing solo versus AI, you were still using a multiplayer server. Now, because it was Epic and they had like you know such amount of money involved and all these super servers that could do everything, that wasn't a real concern. Like they could have one person playing on a server um, by their own. And if you're doing looking at test maps and setups for test maps. Um, if you wanted to have a multiplayer game that had that, you would need to have a server that held one person in it. Um, which then comes, kind of comes to the point about, you know, how feasible is it to do it. So um, I'm running a multiplayer server here just now, but in reality, if I was running a game like either Predecessor, Core, Ethereal, or like any of the other ones, if they want to offer like a single player experience where people can go in and do test levels, not only do they have to go build the test level, so they have to make like a special map or use their existing map. They have to build special interface. So you know, how do you have a card shop that doesn't need money? How do you add levels? How do you put heroes? Like they need to design all that. Um, and then they also need to have some kind of multiplayer server hosting option um, because it's really, really not viable to have like a single player version that runs in your own computer that, that doesn't need internet, doesn't connect. Um, but at the same time also have um, also have that multiplayer option available so people can play multiplayer. Now the only version that I'm aware of that um, of the remakes that lets you do something like this is Overthrow, um, made by Rocket Mania, which I know was done as a project and you know he's not doing any more work on it. Um, but the the Overthrow because that uses peer to peer, which means that one of the ten or fourteen or however many players could play it one of them acts as the server and all the other people connect to them as like a host machine so they don't have dedicated servers they just use that as clients so oh, okay so to summarize mongoose yes it's definitely possible um but it's going to require extra tech resource extra dev time a lot of extra consideration and um when multiplayer servers can cost anywhere from 30 to 100 dollars a month depending on your performance and specs um if you're putting servers up for people to connect to single players, you're going to have to build that into your business model and plans and figure a way for that to be a, a viable option. That's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I thought it would be like something extremely simple. I didn't know. Yeah, that that I didn't know. It was just one person per server when you do that, huh? Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's insane. Yeah, and um, Epic, uh, when they, they, they ran the Paragon servers, they used um, Amazon Web Services, AWS. Which are super cheap and like they, they scale so you don't have to have a box um sat in a in a server farm. Like they have like all these big massive machines that can give you a little tiny server that that's like part of another server, so it's really cheap. But for the um other companies that are kind of doing work in Paragon uh, remakes just now, they more than likely won't have that option. They're just gonna have to use server boxes and like it's already expensive. Like dedicated server machines are probably gonna cost a company probably between about 10 and 40 dollars um for each game instance that's run so if you have a server that has i don't know two um, matches running on at the same time you're still going to have to pay for them um so it's expensive it's like 30 dollars or 60 dollars or whatever just to run like two matches at one time and then if you're like okay we're going to take one of them or half of them and give it for someone who wants to go test cards that's you know nine other players who can't play and get involved in a test or a beta oh wow holy shit yeah <laughs> that is a lot of money uh, when you extrapolate that across how many people would be playing exactly when you start thinking about some of the numbers of some of the tests and some of the projects we're talking about like you know ten thousand players already if that's you know like for core there's you know they're saying they're going to have ten thousand alpha slots available even just having 10,000 players, and fair enough, not everyone's going to be logging on at the same time, but once you start thinking about the numbers and the costs, and then you're like, okay, let's do a single player mode as well, and that's 20%, and what, the numbers and the money can get scary very, very quickly. Yeah. 
Okay, I really appreciate you breaking that down because, yeah, like I said, I thought it was just a simple matter, but it is far from simple. <laughs> Holy crap. Yep, yep. So, um, yep, definitely possible. Definitely something that could be done. Um, but I would say, like, not only is it time taken away from getting, like, a game out there and having people playing the game, the time that could probably be used elsewhere. Um, it's just cost. It's just cost. So, yeah, you might see one one day. League of Legends have it, but that's, that game's been around for so many years and so established. Um, you can do it. So, honestly, I would say for the the, 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 the the development companies that are working on the Paragon remakes, for them, um, it really doesn't make sense at this point to focus on something like this. And while it's very nice to have and it'd be good to have the ability to test builds and, like, I'm going to fight a level 15 Severog with blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's just such a waste and drain of money that these companies could be putting elsewhere i don't think they should take it on board okay well i really appreciate you uh you answering our questions from uh from the last episode uh, that's uh that's nice of you to tailor tech time to our to our random thoughts <laughs> uh you're more than welcome happy to have it helped all right so this week's topic of discussion is going to be our proudest paragon moments and our most embarrassing paragon moments uh we're going to tell you ours but i want you guys to let me know in the comments what yours was because those are always fun to read so i think i'll uh, i'll kick it off with pr with my proudest moment um my proudest moment wasn't really even that cool it was i was playing with a uh, with a uh, with my buddy kangles who was a sparrow player and he was getting chased down by a countess and just before uh, she actually used her ult, but just before the damage could go off, I caught her with the old rip lash on Richter, pull, pulled her off of my sparrow, and then uh, pulled her under the tower. We were able to kill her, which isn't impressive in and of itself, but the way Kangles reacted was what made it the proudest moment ever. Because he was just like, what? what? Why am I not dead? What? How am I not dead? What did you do? How did you do that? How am I not dead? <laughs> and that just... <laughs> That really made my day. I mean, that's the fun of playing with others, right? I mean, that's what that's what these games are all about is is producing a moment like that. So, uh, uh, Opalus, what was your proudest Paragon moment? Oh, uh, I mean, my proudest Paragon. Like I said, I'm not like a player or anything. So, uh, my proudest moment. I was playing with uh, one of my friends, Raptors, um, and I was able to delay the the team that we're facing long enough for him to split push with Greystone through two towers and an inhibitor and take the core. So <laughs> I just kind of danced around and made them chase me around. <laughs> oh, that's always fun too. When you're like, you're like, we're going to get this Howie, Howie, we're going to get this Howie. What the hell happened to our core? <laughs> like, yeah. You never see that coming. Well, it's it's funny because you can see on the mini map with, in his video because he made a, a video for, like the L Leroy Jenkins video, and it's just funny because you can see the, all four of them down at our inhibitor, and then suddenly they start running back. And they didn't even back; <laughs> they ran back to the core, but it was too late. <laughs> he Greystone ulted when the core was their core was at like four percent, I think. Yeah, and it was like, "Yep, that's a wrap. Oh. Like, it's over." That's great. Now, is that, that is Raptors amazing. the uh, the YouTuber? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I like Raptors. I actually did an impression of him in one of my videos a, a long time ago. I, I like, I really like Raptors. Um, I, I hope to see him coming back soon. Yeah, I've I've been in contact with him and, and you know talking to him. He's he's interested in coming back. Right. So that, that'll be fun. Mandy, what was your proudest moment? Well, my proudest and my most embarrassing are the same one, and that's when I jungled a sparrow. No, <laughs> um, my proudest moment, actually, it wasn't um, like any one particular moment, but I was really proud of myself for, and th this is actually difficult for me to say, I don't like bragging on myself. I got fairly good at saving people with phase so like i remember pulling um a who was i think revenant was just getting chased down and i just pulled him out and like the i saw the people chasing like wait where did he go you know like they're like <laughs> flipping around so that's like one that kind of sticks out in my mind because i just happened to be in the right place at the right time and shot it out there and got him out so i i liked that i i felt good like i did good with phase yeah. uh it's and, always good and to pulling see the people confusion. out of 
You can almost yeah, see the confusion like, on their faces. <laughs> yeah. So that that always made me feel good when I pulled someone out of a sticky situation with uh with FaZe. Now, and to... then literally my most okay. my literally most uh, embarrassing was when I jungled with Sparrow because <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing and I was like, I don't know, here's minions, let me shoot them. <laughs> Did your jungler say anything in chat? Like, Sparrow yeah, but I didn't get minions? it. Like, they were <laughs> no, they were spamming um, uh, the you know, go right or whatever it used to say, yeah. um, protect right or whatever it used to say. And I'm like, I don't know who was. I don't know. Okay, whatever. And I was just having fun in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing. They certainly can't be referring to me. Yeah, no, it was probably like my first. Um, game not against ai and i was just like i don't know i've been doing this against robots so why don't <laughs> the robots didn't say shit yeah nobody said nobody complained then so i don't understand what your problem is sir or madam i think my most embarrassing moment this is something i do quite a bit in like every game is i envision something so hard that i forget that there's steps involved in it and what i did was it was an entire enemy team grouped up again i was on richter and i was like i'm going to blink through them and then I'm going to ult every single one of them. And I did it. I blinked through and immediately hit my ult, but I forgot to turn around. So I just ulted the air behind everyone. Like, nowhere oh, near man. the enemy team. It worked out, though, because it was like a confusion tactic. Like, half of them turned around to, like, laugh at me, I guess, and try to attack me. And the other half continued going forward. So my team was able to take them out. They, they killed me, of course, because I was... You know, <laughs> dead in the center of him, doing nothing but standing there with my chesticles in the wind. But, uh, yeah, I, I wish I could say it was the only time I did that. But, uh, yeah, I would often do that. I would just blink alt and forget to turn around <laughs> before I did the alt. So that's probably my oh, most man. embarrassing Paragon moment. I would love to see your reaction when you did that. Like, I can just... Just laughter, really. Like Oh, really? Yeah. No, no rage? No, <laughs> no rage. <laughs> what about you, Opalus? Um, well, I, I've I've had quite a few, but um, <laughs> the uh, the one that stands out in my head the most is I I had I was a support and I had almost no health left, so I was going to back, and uh, instead of just backing right away, I threw a ward down in, in Orb Prime Pit, and I was going to back there, and I saw that they had a ward, so I tried to shoot their ward and hit the Orb Prime instead, <laughs> <laughs> and. And the good jobs came a flying. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah, or Prime would just flicked me, and I was dead, and oh. and everyone said good job. Yeah, that oh, hurts because you were safe. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was absolutely safe. I saw everybody on the map. I knew where everybody was. I was like, oh, I'm just going to. Oh, a little board. I'm going to take. No. <laughs> okay then. I'll tell you if I had a dime for every time I saw. In casting call, somebody get killed by the jungle minions, like in the, the very first part of the game. I, that has to be a couple people's most embarrassing moment getting taken out by. I used to call him Badass Jerry, the jungle minion, the one that would take everybody <laughs> down. Badass <laughs> Jerry, the jungle minion. Oh my goodness. Moving on from the topic of discussion, let's get into uh, the community suggestion. This is one that is often suggested by the community, and we're going to hit on it right now. And that's the inclusion of clans or guilds or what have you in the games. Now, talking to Opolis beforehand, uh, sounds like Metabuff already has that planned, right? Yeah, um, we're, we're calling them alliances. Um, I mean, obviously, it might be subject to change the name. But uh, we're looking at team progression. Uh, because we have a, a, a main focus of, of you know, team esports and making this a competitive game. And so we, we are looking at team progression and you know, we're still playing with how many people would be on each alliance, probably 10. That way you can rotate out a player mm -hmm. if you have, you know, a, I've, not everybody's available at every given time for every match throughout a season. So... We're definitely, definitely implementing uh, some sort of team progression, and we're going to play with that as as we advance. So, uh, what could what 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 sort of things do you envision being able to unlock through team progression, like uh, skins or like crowns or something like 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 cosmetic, like it was in Paragon? Um, we've been playing with different different ideas, like uh, different 
bases where you know our website and our, our game API work together. So um, you be able to go to the web page for the team and they have uh, you know a different banner or a different icon, uh, avatars, things like that for for each team. Uh, as they pr progress and you know unlocking different titles for the care or for the players based on their their team's success uh, we're also looking at um, unlocking you know different like physical um, merchandise items you know like to show off for, because every streamer likes to you know show show that they're a little tougher than everybody else so <laughs> you know certain things like uh, you know, League of Legends had a had a jacket for their highest level players. Uh, we're looking at something that that you know allows people to show off the fact that their team is awesome, and as well that they're they're an awesome player. No, oh, awesome, great. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I think you should make it something really embarrassing, though. So, <laughs> like, they kind of want to show it off, but they don't like a like like a core clown nose. So, like, you see, if you see a, a streamer with a core clown nose, you know, that guy's awesome, but he's wearing a clown nose. <laughs> that's, my, or like, that's my suggestion. Or, like, a dunce cap or something. <laughs> yes! Some kind, of, some kind of, like, jester hat or something. Yes! I love it. <laughs> it really we, actually, we, actually, we actually have uh, core salt shakers. So you can just like, oh salt, yeah, pour some oh, salt on the stream. oh, yeah. oh love it's it. funny because it's salt. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Definitely give them the, the the core tights so they can wear those. I, I imagine a lot of the pro players would look pretty good in those tights. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm. I suffer from a condition called Nasetol, so <laughs> I, I probably would not look that great in them because I have no Nasetol. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, I'm Ma Mongoose. I'm sure you would look fantastic. Oh, I, I, I was telling when you were when you showed me those. I was telling you, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear them on stream. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be twerking in them. I'm gonna be doing a front twerk though, instead of a back twerk. I'm, instead of making those that that ass ass clap, I'm gonna make that dick slap. That's what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> the old, the old he helicopter Richter. <laughs> oh my <laughs> exactly. god! <laughs> I need those tights so I can show off my chain. <laughs> oh my oh, that'll god probably get cut out of it. that'll get cut out of it <laughs> no leave it in all right cool um, the embarrassment of mandy that's <laughs> yeah why, that's why is mandy's face all red all the time <laughs> uh maybe it doesn't I'm get embarrassed easy <laughs> she acts like it on the show but he likes to pretend like i'm not innocent when i really yeah, am right yeah. So uh, okay. <laughs> so, so moving uh, on to facts instead yeah. of fictions. <laughs> oh, Opolis, let's be on my side. <laughs> moving on from the uh, community suggestion, a new little feature we're going to do on the show is I'm going to go ahead and plug some of the uh, kind of smaller YouTube channels to help them get some visibility. It's hard whenever you're starting out as a YouTuber. One of the bigger things is just getting people to see your content. Like you can put so much into it and be so proud of it, but Nobody wants to view it because they've never heard of you. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some stuff up. The first one is from Shark. Uh, if any any anybody in the community, the creator community knows who Shark is, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the community in general don't know. Shark makes really great um, cinematic edits and montages of Paragon, and he's and still making them today. Like has like backed up stored footage that he. He's making edits with. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and check out Shark. I'll, I'll leave a, a link down in the uh, video description. And I'll also link one of his videos on the end card at the end of the video. And the other one I wanted to highlight was Rasta underscore 24. He is a French YouTuber. So if any any French speaking um, fans out there, you know, if you're dual lingual, you speak English and French, but you prefer your content in French. I would suggest checking out Roster underscore 24. Again, I'll have link a, a link to his channel in the video description below and a link at the end of the video to one of his videos. So that's it for that little segment. Uh, let's move on to plugs. Opolis, anything you want to plug other than your video game? No, I do not have anything. <laughs> I just pulled a Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> pulled a Mandy. Mandy, anything you want to plug? 
Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nothing at all? No, I, um, no, nothing. Okay, cool. Mandy's across the board. Mandy's across the board. Mandy's across the board. I guess I'll plug then. Uh, we're going to start off a Patreon for the uh, for the show. It's just my old Patreon. I just changed the name to uh, For the Minions. So it's uh, patreon.com forward slash For the Minions. I'm still working out on working out perks and stuff like that. Just trying to recuperate the cost of my editing software and try and help out the channel by possibly getting Mandy and I both some uh, green screen stuff like that. Um, I haven't really, like I said, I haven't worked out the perks. One thing I definitely do not want to do is force people to pay for content i don't want people that to be able to pay to see stuff that other people that don't pay can't see if you know what i mean like I, that, i'm very uncomfortable with that so what i may do is we may live stream the recording of for the minions so that uh only patreons can see the recording that way you know they're not seeing anything that that everybody else doesn't get to see in a you know highly edited format later on so that's something I'm playing with. We'll take a look at that. So, uh, and uh, of course, you'll get a shout out on the uh, on the show as well. But I think that's it for this week's for the minions. It was a big show. Thanks for hanging in there with us. I know I got a lot of you guys are super excited after seeing Core's map. I was super excited to see it myself. Very amazing stuff. Very beautiful work. And uh, that's going to be it for for the minions for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye, guys. Everybody wave. Oh, Paul's can't wave because he's just an icon. Bye. Bye. I'll wave for him. There. I'm waving in, in my heart. There you go. Oh. oh, you get a heart wave. That's even a better than wave. a hand wave. <laughs> Mangoo.